So although bullet journaling in my traveler's notebook has been going strong and I've been absolutely loving it, lately I've been incorporating a lot more journaling into my bullet journal insert in this notebook. And today I thought I would take you guys along with me as I set up one of these spreads, which is a little travel journal slash memory keeping spread for a quick trip I took to Kingston a while back. So I'm just flipping to a dot grid page that is blank in my current insert in this notebook, and then we're just gonna get straight right into it. Before I get into it, I just wanted to say, hey, if you're new here, my name is Caitlin, and I make a lot of journaling, bullet journaling, and traveler's notebook content over here on this little corner of the internet. And yeah, that's me. Let's jump right into the video. Right now I'm showing you a couple of photos that I printed on my HP Sprocket printer that I intend on pasting into my journal. The great thing about these photos is they come with an adhesive backing, so you don't have to do any gluing or messy pasting of any kind in order to put these into your journal, which is really, really nice. Instead of just printing out these photos using the regular default settings on the app that comes with this printer, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of what kinds of customizations I like to do to my photos in the editing process. So the main thing I like to do with my Sprocket printer is I like to go in and I like to add borders to my photos. So I thought I would quickly show you what kind of border filters I use in this app in case you're curious about what I use. I mainly rotate between this thicker border, which is the third one from the right, or I do this thinner border, which I'm going to be showing you today, which is the fourth one in. They all kind of look the same, but if you tap around, you'll be able to find the right one. And the trick with these borders, if you have a square photo, is you have to slightly zoom out the photo so that it covers the entire space so you get an even width of border all the way around the photograph. And that is how I get these white borders around my photos. It doesn't require any complicated editing. I just use the filter right in the app and that works really well for me. So I went ahead and printed the four photos that I wanted on this spread in advance using the same technique that I just showed you. And after I printed those out, I took my alphabet stamps, which I got from Michaels, and I pulled out the letters of the alphabet that would allow me to stamp the title Kingston, since this is where the photos were taken, and I thought, you know, the most effective title would likely be the location of the visit. I always try to pick titles and photos that kind of jog key memories within the trip, so I just figured Kingston would be the most effective. After picking out my stamps, I'm rearranging my photos on the bottom two thirds of the page. I'm trying to kind of balance both the two photos I have of these stone statues so they're not on the same side, as well as kind of trying to balance the colors as best as possible so I don't have too much of a purple side and then another side that's not purple at all. So just playing around to try to get a little bit of balance visually as well as with the color story. After a bunch of fiddling around, I was finally happy with how this photo collage was arranged. So I went in with a pencil and quickly marked down where I wanted the photos to go on the page. This just makes it easier when I then go and remove the adhesive backing. I know exactly where it's going and there's no confusion. But before I do that, I decided to go in and stamp the title first. This is just because I didn't want to risk any stamping malfunction or getting ink on the photos. And then I would be able to let my ink dry while I put the photos down, which I figured was just a good use of time. So I'm going in here with my letter stamps. I'm not being too careful. I don't mind when my stamps kind of have those little edges and Right now my ink is running out, so I have to really press it into the pan, which means that there is some ink that gets on the sides and then that, that goes onto the paper, but as long as I can read the title, I figure it's a win in my books. So with the title done at the top, I'm pointing my ink pad away so I don't get ink everywhere, because um, I can get a little messy with this stuff if I'm not careful. And then I'm going in and taking the adhesive backing off of my photos. 
You're able to tell if you've removed the adhesive backing because the actual glue part is blue, as you can see right here. And the glue is pretty strong, so I try to make sure that I have the photo exactly where I want it when I'm pasting it down because I have had trouble repositioning in the past and sometimes I can get it off the page no problem and other times it rips the page, which I am trying to avoid in this situation. So I'm just going in and pasting down all four photos. I went in and did the right side first and then I'm just kind of mirroring the placement on the left hand side so that I can get a really symmetrical layout. And that is kind of the overall process that I went for for this spread. If I wanted to do a little more journaling or writing about what I kind of did in this location, something that I would do is I would paste the photo onto a piece of paper so I could flap the photo open and have kind of a hidden journaling area there just so that the page is still really simple, but there's like little spots for details that allow me to write more if I want to. But in this case, I didn't really want to add any writing because I had a lot of details about this day in my daily logs. That's actually one reason why I've been really loving doing kind of like this photo journaling or memory journaling or travel journaling or whatever you want to call it within the insert that I do my daily logs for bullet journaling. I just really love having that kind of memory keeping aspect which breaks up the very standard looking daily logs and I find it just allows my journal to have a very encompassing view of what was going on in my life in that moment. So that was the video. Here is my very simple, very easy. This took me maybe half an hour because I was slow with the camera, but you could probably do this in under 10 minutes. It was super fast and I can't wait to look back on this in the future and relive these memories. And with that further ado, I'm putting away my journal and putting away this video, so to speak. If you enjoyed this video and you want to hang around, make sure to subscribe. I usually post videos every Monday, so if you want to stick around, make sure to hit that and the bell icon. Besides that, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you are all doing well, and I hope you are all healthy during this time. And that's all for me. See you later.